for the grand final. It's underway here on the Daily Telegraph. Community TV. And here's Blake Metcalf. He's been sharp this year, hasn't he? Signed on, of course, with the with the Canberra Raiders. Looking for a first penalty here, but not coming. Mari getting off. They're out to the 40 meter line here. First set of six here in the grand final. As they again now hit hard with everything, vigor and all. Look to come to the halfway line. So good inroads here in the first set. The Hill Sports High. They're back out to the halfway line. Here's Tia putting in the kick downfield. Taken here right on the 10 metre line, and this is Fager Lilly, Phil, and he's back out towards the 20 metre line. Yeah, good first set with the ball in hand there from the hills, and a good kick downfield as well as now it's Patrician Brothers getting belted. Coming out there was Godfrey Ilavalu. Back to his feet now as they push towards halfway. There's the biggest man on the field here at Leichhardt Oval right now. It's Jordan Miller, one of the winning West Tigers players from the Harold Matz Grand Final. And now there's a little bit of disagreement out there in the middle between these sides being buoyed by the crowd. And referee Kieran Casey has had to come in and just pull these two sides apart. Plenty of feeling early on in this New South Wales School Boy Cup Grand Final, Peter. Of course, Jordan Miller, you just touched on there. He's a powerhouse front rower, isn't he? He's got a massive motor. He was man of the match in the West Magpies, Harold Matthews Grand Final, which we covered on New South Wales Rugby League TV. But right now, tension in the Grand Final. And a big cheerio to both schools taking our live coverage into their auditoriums. Great to have your support right throughout 2022. Culminating here today in the Peter Mulholland Cup Grand Final. So there's Jordan Miller on the right hand side of the screen. You saw there both uh, hookers having a chat to referee Kieran Casey there. They are of course captains here today. Peter, as that venomous defence from the hills continues, Pat's trying to work it back to halfway. And there is some feeling in this one. As Pat's get to the end of their set now and kick it down field, and it's retrieved well there at the back. Yeah, Metcalf was in two minds there, wasn't he? The fullback wasn't sure to go after it, or he allowed Lubber Badee. Look at this defence in the middle of Leichhardt Oval. Grand final defence there by Ilavalu as they now come up the middle. Look at this again. Not one, not two, but three in the tackle. And who was it? It was Jordan Miller in there again. Here's Patia. He's taken down here just short of the halfway line. So the Hill Sports High. They're about to rumble and rock their way over the halfway line. Good tackle there by Joshua Almazam. Now they look the right. Look for the kick now off the boot there of Tia. Fager Lilly does well. And he looks up. And who is there? It's Billy Scott, the captain, taken down here 30 metres out from their own goal line. Yeah, three and a half minutes gone. And the energy right now is at all-time highs from both of these sides as Pats try to work it out of their own ends that's Joshua Alhazen the vice captain in this team he's got a twin brother coming off the bench today as well there's Big Miller once again getting on the front foot finds his front as well up to his own 40 as Pats work it out of their own ends there's the little Billy Scott with a good dart out of dummy half and some post contact push as well right there fifth and last so the ball comes now to chad daniels who goes downfield 
And it's retrieved at the back by Blake Metcalf. Yeah, center of the field here, Phil. So they're looking to find gaps, aren't they? Through the middle corridor. The big Mitchell's in there and Miller. Now they again try to go out there to the Wayne Pierce Hill. Taken down here just short of the halfway line. Here's Metcalf again. He pumps it to the halfway line just short by a couple of meters. They work it now through Diarani. Good run here by the lock forward. So at the last tackle now for the Hills. In between fullback and the winger. Here's Fua. He looks up. He beat the first one, Fua. But he can't beat the second. And he's taken down here. Tackle number one. So a good grind early on in this grand final. Yeah, the defence has been top-notch from both sides. As now you see Corey Lee have his first carry out of dummy half. Five and a half minutes gone. Just that one stoppage so far. So both of these sides will be breathing heavily at this point. So an early kick downfield from Chad Daniels, one of the stars in that semi. And here come the Hills out of their own end. Decent field position for Hills Sports High starting off this set as Harry Hassett, the Australian schoolboys representative now, work, works his way up towards halfway through sets of hands. They go now just trying to ask a few questions out on the edge and there's some good space up over halfway now for the hills. And up the guts they go. Still a couple of tackles left in this set as well. It will be chipped over the top and trying to get it in behind Corey Lee was Cassius Tia. It was a good kick and well retrieved by the left winger for Pats. He's done well, Corey Lee. Played every game. He's a natural player who can play many positions. We've come to know that right throughout 2022. Put him anywhere. He won't disappoint. Also creates a lot of chat from the back. So we're locked up here on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard. This is El Hazem. Takes play to the 40. Look for the kick now. Inside the 40. Colhoun sends it straight down the middle of the field. Here's Pritchard. He's got space to work. He comes into the possession there of Funa, and they take him down here just short of the halfway line. So both sides still feeling one another out early on in the in the grand final. We've had seven minutes of the match. Here's Patia. Played for the Australian schoolboys. We know that. Also a part of the Panthers SG ball side he's going places in the game of rugby league right on the 30 meter line nil all again they scoot from dummy half looking around aren't they but there's mari in the tackle so deep numbers to the right that's the way they come now diarani lovely ball needed to be he's pocky up he cannot get there great defense great scramble there by Pats, right on their own goal line, Phil. So there's Corey Lee. We know that he's a hell of a finisher. I fancy his chances of maybe putting one in that in that left corner for Pats at some stage through this game. But there's his defence on display as well, on the left wing, doing well. And his opposite number, Sean Pockier, who scored the winner last week for the Hills, as Pats now work it out of their own end. So a scoreless first nine minutes in this Schoolboy Cup Grand Final as Patrician Brothers Fairfield work it back up towards halfway. And finally, we have a relieving penalty in this game, according to Kieran Casey. And a chance now, really the first great opportunity for Paddies to attack in this ball game. And there goes the kick into touch. Good kick. A gain of... 20 meters so nine minutes gone 
here on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard as Ilavalu. He takes the tap. He's strong, isn't he? Fast and elusive. As you can see there, he was able to offload the football at every opportunity. Here's Miller, the powerhouse, front rower. He's damaging. He's brought down. Stands in the tackle. They'll go through the left-hand side of the park. Is there a try coming here? What a tackle there. Chaddy Daniels, welcome to the grand final. Ayash, dangerous. Can he get there? He's within a couple of metres. So nil all. First points of the grand final. Up for grabs as Daniels. He finds a Miller. He's close as the last tackle. They've got to go to the right. Ayash finds Daniels. Here comes the kick. Well, his intention there, Phil, was to find the try line in goal and now they got a penalty 10 meters out from their own goal line yeah you're not going to confuse a rugby league referee in, the, in those <laughs> circumstances trying to drag someone back into their in goal so a helpful penalty there and a good first defensive test from the hills and what a kick for touch that was as well chewing up nearly 30 meters to get this set of six started so one third of this first half now has elapsed. And it's Petteru Pritchard with a nice 10 meter carry. The left side center of this Hills side. And another penalty, so that's going to help work their way back into opposition territory, the Hills. They did have a set down in that Pats red zone a couple of minutes ago, but outside of that, that has been really their only trip down into deep enemy territory but here's another fantastic opportunity now for the hills as cassius tee up the roosters sg ball representative finds touch just inside that paddy's 20 meter defense so we talk about the pendulum in the game of rugby league is it going back into the Hill Sports High School's possession here. They're inching their way closer, aren't they? With every surging run. Great tackle there by Mari. Chance to the right. Here's Tia. He goes himself. He beat one. He's got the try line in front of him. He'll get there, Willie. He'll get down low. Was a double movement. He's lost the football. He's lost the footy. Well, there you go. Cassius Tia. We came to know him in the New Zealand under 16s two years ago. A finalist, a grand finalist for the Roosters. And boy, Phil, doesn't he steer the troops around the park quite nicely? Yeah, he beat multiple defensive attempts there, but hats off to the referee, Kieran Casey. He was right on the spot. There was no one better on the field to make a judgment call on that one. And Cassius Tia just inches short of the line great cover defense great scramble by patties we've got a false start here at the scrum so we're coming back and almost 13 minutes gone now and no score in this grand final there there were nerves in that first couple of minutes and they'll only build if neither side can settle into this one and open their accounts so it's St. patties Patrician Brothers Fairfield coming out of their own ends. Being wrestled to the ground there is Josiah Funa Iuta. Now coming off the back fence is Big Miller once again. It's not just the size that's impressive, but the work rate as well. And he, as he still edges forward, about seven metres shy of halfway now. Through hands they go. There's Ibrahim again, just bumping away that's Josh Al Hazem uh, Josh Al Hazem pardon me back up to halfway almost Bailey Myers this is now the fifth and last for Pats they're gonna just try a little something different here and it's not bad well coming through was Taj Colhoun and it's going back the other way Metcalf got cut in half but he's back to his feet and he's still going up over halfway, finished off. And there was a little bit too much height 
in that defensive contact as well. So what a run that was from Blake Metcalf and he wins his team a penalty at the end of it. Of course, he's the school captain, Blake Metcalf. And congratulations to him as well, picking up a contract with the Canberra Raiders in the NRL. It's a phenomenal effort. 18 years of age in his last year at the Hill Sports High. So we're still searching for points here in the grand final. Lita Sonny, member of the, the Corolla Sharks, Harold Matthews grand finalists. That's where they are. A couple of metres away from the goal line. They'll look to swing it. Tia, great ball, there's the try. I think you'll find they're going to give it on this occasion. And Lababidi, he picks up first points on grand final day. The number two out there on the left wing. First try to the hills, 15 minutes gone. They're up by four points to nil. Alar Lababidi, the left winger for Hills, finishing the job there, the South. SG ball rep and some nice ball playing there on the inside from Cassius Tia as well. Read that situation nicely and finishing the job well there, Alar Labibidi. Well, he's a try scoring machine, and that's why, folks, eight tries this year in the Peter Mulholland Cup. That's how you do it. And look at the crowd over there assembled 20 metres out. As we see now, a chance for Blake Metcalf. Now, they don't come much tougher, do they, Phil, in the game of rugby league than this. He's brought the ball back right on the 20-metre line. He's just thrown a little bit of turf up there to just to see which way the wind's heading. But he does have the breeze behind him with this kick in the first half of the grand final. Cast your mind back to the semi, we saw Taj Colhoun land a couple from the sideline and that ended up being critical in the out, uh, outcome of that game. So right here, these points could be extremely important. He's got the distance. He's got it. What a kick from the sideline. Metcalf, he's got it on string so far in the grand final. 6-0, 13 minutes out from halftime, Phil. Yeah, we've got multiple elite goal kickers out there uh, operating in both of these teams. And as we just spoke about, that could be crucial later on in this game. So 17 minutes have elapsed now in this first half. What a wicked bounce that talk and the flag goes up over there as well so a perfect reply from pats so both of their kickoffs including the one to kick off this grand final have been nasty finding grass and putting the hills under a bit of pressure and a chance for patrician brothers fairfield to hit right back here and it's Yehia Ayach about to receive this play of the ball. So here go Pats working their way close to the line. There's Mari just a couple of meters short. Slowly returns to his feet. Through hands they go. Daniel's back on the inside. Al Hazem just a couple of meters out. The vice captain of this Pats lineup right underneath the sticks. Going himself Ayach. He's going to be held up, in fact, told to play it. Centimetres from that try line. So open side they go. In fact, there's a dummy. So this will be called held up. It's Matt Alhazam out there now. St. George SG ball rep. So he plays it 10 metres out. They work it to the right-hand side and through sets of hands they go there's a little bit of space out there there's the offload right on that far side noah funa 
is ended up being put into touch. So great scramble defense there from the hills. And they hold out for the time being. It's still a clean sheet. They lead six points to nil. 19 minutes gone. And Pats so far haven't had the answers inside that opposition red zone. Of course, Noah Furner is a Cabramatta junior. He's a very quiet, humble student. Had the chance to go out to the school throughout the week and have a chat to most of the sides out there, players out there today. And they just couldn't wait to get out here onto Leichhardt Oval. School's absolutely buzzing with excitement. Funaraya Luta is over the top. Referee just telling them to go back to play the ball here right on their own 10 meter line. But the combination of Tia and Ibrahim and, and Metcalf for the back has been instrumental in their success for the Hills this year as they barge their way towards the 30 meter line. They're coming off that tremendous victory as we see our Metcalf up towards the halfway line over Erindale College last week by 22 to 18. What an absolute nail biter that was at Campbelltown. That ball, did it go forward? Referee says no, it floated, and the referee was quite okay with that. And that's where they are, right on the halfway line. So they need a good clearing kick now. They're going to torpedo punt it straight down the middle corridor and who's back there it's Corey Lee as I mentioned he's played most positions in the back line this year for Pats as they now come forward to the 40 good solid tackle but unfortunately it's against the rules in the rule book penalty to Pats here Phil 40 meters out from their own goal line <laughs> uh, don't you love the tension of a grand final you know it's been bubbling away all week and now it's here and they've just you know they're just getting it out of their system aren't they yeah they're just getting to know one another up close and personal not a lot in that but we uh, love to see the feeling in that and it will be a patrician brothers fairfield penalty a chance for colhoun to get pats back inside opposition territory and now referee kieran casey's just going to call out captain Billy Scott to tell his troops to cool the Jets a little bit. So Jordan Utah, he's about to come out onto the field for Hills as well. Play for the Parramatta Harold Mats. He's only 16 years of age. He's the youngest in the grand final today. So congratulations to him. What a bright future. His dream was to make it into a grand final at Schoolboys Cup level. And his dreams come true today, Phil. Yeah, congratulations. And what a moment this is for so many students, of course, in this game. So it will be penalty going the way of Patrician Brothers Fairfield. Colhoun to click kick for the line. Gives that one plenty of height into the grandstand here at Leichhardt Oval. 22 minutes gone. First half, bringing it up and bringing it hard was Godfrey Ilavalu. Now, there he is. One of the other 15s into the game, Matt Alhazen. Back towards the middle of the sticks it's Bailey Myers the Bulldogs Harold Matt's representative center of the park options both sides as Daniels through hands they go Colhoun out onto the edge once again they asked a few questions out there not that long ago Lola here will play it Colhoun again squares one up and put on his backside is Funa Iuta fifth and last tackle now Daniels goes wide. Al Hazem bumps away from one. Links up there. That's a good little kick from Muaga Tia. And he, in the end, didn't quite get the roll. Muaga to, uh, to Tia. So both benches being utilized in the back end of this first half. And there's a great backstory to Taj Colhoun. Spoke to him throughout the week and 
He owes a lot, he said, in his young life to rugby league. He was telling us that he ended up growing up in a foster care and footy had been helping him manage his perspective on situations that had occurred throughout his life and it helped him pretty much push through to become the best version of himself. So what a lovely story. And that's what rugby league, that's what sport in general can do. So make sure you get involved in sport, in rugby league. Here's Metcalf. Here's Tia. He's trying to offload the footy. He does offload the football. Back away to Metcalf. Little chip in towards the end goal. He tried to get it back. He couldn't. Cleaned up here right on their own goal line. As Patrician Brothers of Fairfield come away with it here. Through their winger in. Idnoa Funa. As I mentioned, he's fairly quiet in the classroom, but he, he leaves his voice. He leaves his passion for the rugby league field. Here's Ilavalu. He's strong. He's fast. And we know he's very elusive. Came out of the SG ball this year for the for the Dragons. And what an absolute thriller it was last week. Pats 19-18 over Westfield. What a memorable moment. Right on the hooter. What was it? Only about three or four seconds to go. That field goal kicked them into the into the grand final today. Here's Miller. He's drifting across field. Miller, what a motor. When the motor gets going, that's what he can do. Taken down here 40 metres out. It's the last tackle. Back there now for Daniels. He says, boys, follow this. Into the waiting possession over there of Lubabidi. And he's taken down here, Phil, about 15 metres in from touch on the eastern side of the field. Yeah, good kick return there from the only try scorer of this game so far. Now it's Pedro Pritchard. That's a strong carry. As they work it out. And that's a good run from the fullback. Blake Metcalf. So this has been a good set. Worked well by their back three. And now up over halfway and looks like there was just a slight error as they were trying to get back to their feet. So, a bit of a let off there for Patricia Brothers Fairfield because you get the sense that the Hills were just building some momentum there. It was a great set up to that point. But a cheap turnover will give Pats a chance to open their accounts before this first half concludes. Oh, how quick has the first half gone, folks? Just over five minutes remaining on the Daily Telegraph scoreboard in the first half here of the 2022 NRL Schoolboys Cup. Great hands needed to be. Support on the left. Go themselves taken down here right on the halfway. Back away again now from Daniels. Here's Joshua Alhazm. He's a dynamic ball runner. Played for the Parramatta Reels as the co-captain in the Harold match season. He knows what big time rugby league is all about. Here's Miller again, the workhorse, the toiler of the pack. They work it again now. Colhoun, he's wiry, he's strong, isn't he? And just an, an elusive ball runner. Matt has, has him now. He's hard as nails. He always has a a high work rate. He'll never let you down. Here's Daniels. Cuts out one. Here's Lee. Ball's gone without it. He's gone without the footy. And they've turned it over here. And the Hills will come away with it here. 20 metres out from their own goal line. Yeah, just and a bit of... Just a bit mistimed there. Ooh. as The whistle is blown. So, Kieran Casey has to blow that whistle a few times. There's more feeling out there. Miller's right in the center of it. Well, Little Sonny wasn't happy with Miller. Now, tensions are boiling over. Now, Albert Little Sonny, he was the Sharks Harold Matthews grand finalist, and he's taking on Miller. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's above your weight. It's, Good uh, luck with that. It's adventurous. And you see the touchies coming in here to have their say as well. Brody Barry and Nathan Hillier. 
So there was obviously plenty picked up in that exchange. And frustrations would be boiling for Patricia Brothers Fairfield as well. They haven't been able to find any points in this first half as of yet. And there's only just over a minute remaining before Oranges. So Kieran Casey has a big job here just to try and settle things down in what's been a really spicy first half in this game. So no doubt he'll be having a chat with, with Jordan Miller after both touch judges give their side to the story. He's just had a, a powerhouse season, Jordan Miller. As I mentioned, he was man of the match in that West Magpies, Harold Matthews grand final winning team. Had an almighty day. An almighty game. And the touch judges have given their side of the story and he's calling over Jordan Miller. Here we go. How good's the coverage for this schoolboy cup grand final up close and personal right now? He's put him in the bin. So Jordan Miller has been sent to the sin bin here in the grand final. They're down to 12. And he will not be back until the eighth minute of the second half. Will there be a second to follow? Both sides are down to 12. Huge moment in this game as we see Albert Lidasoni also make his way off the ground. We'll have to see what changes are made of course we're just only playing center for this hills lineup for miller he had already come off for a, a, a quick stint a quick breather and then he worked his way back into the game so miller had already had the two stints in this first half and now that threatens just to displace rotation plans for Paddy's heading into the second half as Hills work their way up over halfway. Good run there again from Mustafa Durrani. He's been strong in this game so far. Stepping off that left foot, Jonathan Ibrahim takes the tackle this time. There's Tia working it down that left edge. Now finding his way Interestingly wide is Patea, so he'll play it a few metres out. Hills with a real opportunity to extend that lead right here. Fifth and last, centre of the park. They work it back short side, through hands they go. Back out to the try scorer, tried to put a little grubber in behind Labadidi. And there's been a knock on at the end of it. They will have one more chance, two score points before half time. So right on the 10 of Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. And you have to say, by looking around the ground, they do have the support here in the grand final. But they're down by six points to nil. Hills about to uh, have another crack here with just over 20 seconds remaining 
in the first half here on grand final day another try here that would put the cat amongst the pigeons wouldn't it and their coach scotty jones would be very pleased so a full set coming with just over 18 seconds remaining so jonathan ibrahim there he is dishes it away to the left here's tia back to metcalf he'll get there try two in the grand final how dynamic is he he's off to the raiders and now we know why slicing his way through chiming in with the footy the big dummy put the foot to the accelerator and here it is on the daily telegraph replay just take a look at this look at that beautiful ball and metcalf too big too strong too good yeah nice ball playing there from cassius tia back on the inside timing that ball out to metcalf perfectly and metcalf just knew he had enough speed and enough space to back himself for the line does just that and that is an enormous moment in this game and a real heartbreaker there for pats they've both had decent red zone opportunities in this grand final first half so far but it has been hills sports high taking full advantage and the try scorer has a chance to convert where he has already put one over right on that far touch line which would also take his personal tally to eight points well they're not making game. it easy for him are they phil <laughs> the side two grand final kicks from right out on the touch line well he's already had the dress rehearsal hasn't he so he knows what's required and he's got pretty much the entire patricia brothers fairfield school right in his ear as well over there he loves pressure is he hearing it is he feeling it taking his time the drums are beating hits it with the right boot it's going to fall short this time so no change and that's half time folks what a first half of footy hill sports high go to the break leading by 10 points to nil on the daily telegraph scoreboard and phil how did you make the first 30 minutes so the second half here at leichardt oval you're with peter jolly and phil Pryor in the nrl commentary box sit back as the next 30 minutes in 2022 gets underway and with the first touch here it comes back to Funaraya Luda. She's very dangerous on the right edge. Played a lot of footy this year in the Harold Matthews. We got to know him on New South Wales Rugby League TV. Mua Guatia now sets it up. Here's Daniels. He finds Joshua Alhazam. Another one from the Parramatta Eels. Going places in the hierarchy taken well into the bread basket there are blake metcalf and he runs straight into the brick wall there hit hard there by matt halhazam so here come the hills out of their own end that set of six started well by metcalf and that's harry hassett the aussie schoolboys representative as they in no time at all work their way back to midfield playing it now jonathan ibrahim and good run there straight up the guts luron patea they're only 26 meters out from that pats try line now tr with a cut out and there is a bit of an overlap as well but it has traveled forward the pass so Labadidi, who already yeah. had the one try in this game so far, he won't be adding to his tally right there. 
Gee, provides plenty of strike, doesn't he, out here on the on the left edge. Love a beady. I know that the the South Sydney Rabbitohs they've got an almighty wrap on the kit. Leave school at the end of the year. And that's been the difference so far in the game, Peter, as well, hasn't it? Cassius T are taking it to the line down that left edge and finding results. There was the overlap there, but just not quite executing on the pass as Daniels now takes a dummy. Yeah, very versatile, isn't he? Chatty Daniels. He's very clever. He loves to take on the line. Gee, scored a, a crucial try against Westfields, didn't he? Last week. They're back to the halfway line here as Pats. Joshua Halazam surging down to the 40. So three minutes gone in the second half. This is Matt Alhazam. Generates great D, doesn't he? Brings in three or four over the top. And now they're going to get a penalty here. Just going a little bit too high. So they're going to probably take the tap here. So Colhoun doesn't want to muck around with a does he, Phil? Yeah, building some nice momentum there. Both the Alhazam twins as well. Oh, what a connection that was on Josiah Funa Iuta, who's coughed it up. And what was such a promising build-up ends with disappointment there for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. The defence from Hills so far in this game has been elite. So that's where they are, right on the 40. They come up the commentary edge. And there's the defence over the top by Funerai Aluda. So they're still down to 12 men. Both sides after plays were sent to the sin bin in the uh, first half. Of course, I'm referring to Lita Sonny and also big Jordan Miller. So it's still 12 on 12 for a couple of more minutes here in the grand final. As Utah now, he takes play down to the 40 meter line. So it's the fifth and the last as Metcalf. Little chip over the top. Just a little bit too deep. But there he is again in the tackle. Blake Metcalf. If he's not throwing dummies, if he's not scoring tries, Phil, he's putting little chips over the top and coming up with tremendous defense here on their opposition, the Pats, as they come now forward to the 40-meter line. Taken over the top here, of course, by Diarani. So a couple more left up their sleeve in this set of six. Back to Myers. Part of the Canterbury Bulldogs, Harold Matthews. He was the player of the year this year. He's just dedicated, isn't he? He's committed. Here's Ilavalu now. Taken down right on the third. It's the last tackle. Back to Funa. He's going to set it up now for Colhoun. Where's Metcalf? There he is. And takes a tremendous tackle there by the big number 11 in Funarai Aluda. As we see now, the Hills come back out towards their own 30-meter line field. Yeah, bringing that one out for the Hills, Pedro Pritchard. And yeah, what an impressive display it's been from the Hills fullback. Here he is again, Metcalf. Enormous work rate and showing some class as well. Every opportunity he gets, slow play the ball as he returns from off his back so an early kick here and he's going to turn them around as well now did he one kick that? bounce and I over think that's the line. a 40 20. what a nudge that was i'm pretty sure he kicked that from inside the 40 and he has cassius t up and that right boot that's huge well i understand we don't have the paint lines on because we've got a soccer match in the days ahead but if they can score a four-pointer off the back of that 40 20 pats will be in for it now they come away now to squire they've got numbers to the right 
It's just a matter of putting it through the back line. Comes away now from Scott. Comes short. Ibrahim offloads. He's the general, isn't he? He'll go to dummy half. Now away. Offloads at short ball. It comes back to Ibrahim. Can he get there? I think he's got there. Try three. Oh, they've got one hand on the trophy now in 2022. Thanks to Community TV. Yeah, just on the back foot there defensively, Patricia Brothers Fairfield and Hills took full advantage. And they've got enormous ascendancy in this game now. Off the back of that Tia kick and that short ball as well. So Tia, he's had a hand in pretty much all Hills Sports High's points so far in this one. And he links up with his halves partner there, Ibrahim was going to always be too tough to stop. And there's the shots now of Pats. I wonder what they're saying. I think it's pretty basic. They just need to find their way up the other end of the field. Now, I'm sure the message from uh, Coach Frank Pritchard at halftime would have been, let's not, let, let's not get too urgent too quick. Let's try and get back into the grind and get back into this game. But you'd have to think now, 14 possibly a 16 point margin now's the time to take some chances and put the foot down so here's blake metcalf straight over the black dot another two points here hills on fire in the nrl schoolboys cup for 2022 another two points to them Will they be hard to stop from here? Yeah, they sure will. 20 minutes left. There's Metcalf, as you see. I mean, how about Canberra Raiders' fullback stocks right now with, obviously, Savage at the top grade and Metcalf coming through the ranks at a younger age as well as we see Paddy's go short with the restart. The Hills are all over it out there. It's Harry Hassett, the Penrith jersey flag and Australian schoolboys representative and it's been the the big names and the big players standing tall for hills sports high so far in this game as well in possession once again working their way back to midfield has it once again and a penalty off the back of it harry wanted another carry and he gets the result as well so t is going to send this one into touch and send his team deep back into opposition territory a chance to potentially ice this ball game as well so good kick for touch right on the 40 meter line so they're getting their fair share of possession here up by 16 points to nil three tries two conversions to blake metcalf Here's Tia, dishing it back. For Tia, as I mentioned, play for the Australian schoolboys in the under-16s on the left-hand side. Back to Metcalf. Geez, nuggety, isn't he? Taken into the ground by Ilovalu. Now, was that helped out? No, says the referee. Well, that all came to the tremendous tackle from the Pats, just forcing the error field. Yeah, Metcalf lifted right up and then dropped referee Kieran Casey didn't have a problem with how Metcalf was uh, put to ground and he's just coughed up at the end of it and Kieran Casey was perfectly okay with the exchange so Patrician Brothers Fairfield with the let off there although they are of course camps deep inside their own territory they're going to have to try and create something in a hurry. So more changes. Big number 13 for Paddy's Bailey Myers is now taking a breather. And his leg speed through the middle of the ground has been important so far in this game as well. So it looks like big Jordan Miller is back into the game. So it's back to 13 on 13 as well. And he straight away he's putting his 
Hand up for a carry. You can see him lurking there in the middle, Pete. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't miss him. You'd be able to see him from Mars. That's how strong and how much of an impact he makes on this side. Here's Joshua Alhazm. He missed a fair bit of the year. Here he is now, Miller. Look at the run. <laughs> Took four of them. That's the halfway line. Comes back away now again to Colhoun. There's Patia. So it's the last tackle now. Daniels. So where's Metcalf? There he is. He's drifting across field, but he looks up and he runs into a brick wall. Three over the top there from Pats. Right on his own 20 meter line. So grand final day. 2022 folks, three tries to nil, 16 points to nil. On the Daily Telegraph scoreboard brought to you by Community TV. This is the fourth year the Daily Telegraph has been riding the Schoolboys Cup Rugby League. Now they're well inside their own 40. Last time they were down here, they came up with a 40 20, but this time they've kicked it out on the full, so it's going to be a changeover change over to Pat. Now we talk about key moments perhaps this could be one of them if Pats can find their way up the other end of the field here Phil. That's the moment that Pats needed in this ball game. Cassius tee up. He's barely put a foot wrong so far. He's been one of the best players on the park. He just tried to bite off a little bit more than he could chew there and this could be the moment for Pats to try and work their way back into this game and build some momentum as well there's Massimo Mari the Bulldogs Howard Matt's rep number eight jumper there's Jordan Miller his front row partner met front on but he got the offload away somehow unreal stuff here's Yeha Ayach almost up to that Hills 10 meter line they need something right here Al Hazem he's been massive for this Pats team so far. He's wrestled the ground. Only a few metres out, Pats. Daniels as they go through hands. Colhoun off that right foot. Colhoun almost for the line. He does get the offload away. And that attacking raid comes to an end, but there's a couple more opportunities for Pats. Out of acting half, Ayarch goes himself. And Pats have points. It could be game on here at Leichhardt Oval. Patricia Mothers Fairfield, they work their way back into this game. And it's the captain, Yehia Ayarch, who gives them a sniff. Well, he's cool as ice, high football IQ, and talking to their coach throughout the week, they say that he could well be the next Cameron Smith. That's a big rap. But how does he read the game well he reads it very well doesn't he the SG ball representative from the Parramatta Reels that was a captain's try we spoke about key moments in the match that was their time and now are they clawing their way back into the grand final yeah, I hate to obviously dwell on the negatives as well but Cassius Tia now will be really disappointed of course with that uh, that kick up the other end which gave Pats the field position they needed so we'll have to keep a close eye on his response he's had his hands in everything for Hills of course so far in this game Colhoun he was incredible off the tee in that semi as we alluded to in that first half although he's pushed this one just across the face so the score stays at 16 points to 4 but Pats, they have worked themselves back into it and back to just the two scores in this game. Still plenty of time as well. 15, 14 minutes left to go. So 12 points in it. It's community TV. 
And the crowd, I'll tell you what, half the school's out here from the Pats. If they ever want to shift the momentum, they've got the crowd support, the school support. It's game on here in the grand final. And there's the kickoff. We've got 13 minutes remaining. And the gap, it's getting a little bit closer here in the grand final as they now look to shift it through the middle corridor. And that's exactly what they do to the roar of the crowd. Listen to the crowd. They're lifting them with every run. That's what's required. As it comes back away now, again the Miller. He's looking to come into it, isn't he, the big fella? There's the captain. Offloads it. Here's Daniels. He'll run. He's through. Can he get away from the second? He's taken down here. Just a couple of metres in from the eastern touchline. They're looking around again. El Hazem. He's been dynamic, not just today, but for the entire competition. That's the last tackle now. As Pats thump it downfield. Up it goes. They've lost the ball. It's going to be play on. This is going to be a try if they can get there. They've got there. What a beautiful grand final try. That was incredible. Noah Funa, the Cabramatta Jr. They say he's quiet, but he's not quiet now. They're roaring towards the back end of this as we go to the replay. There was the mistake. Johnny on the spot. Metcalf couldn't get him. And there's the try that's put them back into the grand final with 10 minutes remaining. Opportunistic there from Furner, and you have to put that down to the momentum, I think. Just Labberbeater just reading it wrong in flight and coming through with a nice chase. Noah Furner to give Pats more than a sniff now. This kick for goal, of course, crucial to get Pats back to within a converted try. But you just have to feel like the crowd on the far side here at Leichhardt Oval play, has played a part in that score, given the momentum that Pats are riding right now. So Colquhoun from the touchline. This one, he's got it on the string, has he? No! Just pushes it to the right. What a grand final we've got coming up, folks. Ten minutes remaining. Wow. I hope this crowd atmosphere is going through to your auditorium or wherever you might be watching our grand final day coverage. Crank up the data. This is going to be a nail-biter eight-point ball game, Phil, with just over ten minutes remaining. Yeah, obviously not the response the Hills were looking for after conceding points. Back-to-back -back tries now. It's Pats with all the momentum and ten and a half minutes is going to feel like a really long time for Hills sports high as well. As we see their fullback Metcalf kick off, he kicks it oh. deep as well. What a response that was with Zaydis Muwaga Tutia uh, unable to come down with that one near his own dead ball line. And now they're going to have to drop it out, Pats. So there's, there have been problems returning kickoffs from both teams on that side of the ground in this game so far, which is a an interesting side note. And Pats are going to give this one height as well. Look at the chase coming through as well. It's been knocked on and it's been turned over. It ends up in the hands of Jack Lee. They needed that, Pats. Well, that was quite impressive. That breeze is behind Hill, so they allowed it to go high into the air. And they've come up with it AFL style. And they've come back away with it now through the middle corridor. Now they're attacking. You can see the pendulum. It's swinging. It's swinging back into uh, Pat's favour here. Muawagatia. He's a clutch player. They also call him the game breaker. Back to Daniels. Out it comes. Al Hazem. Can he offload? No. He's brought down 10 metres away. He'll get to his feet slowly. Penalty. Penalty to Pat's here. Leg pull. It's 
They're not going to muck around here at all, are they? They're going to take the tap. Why not? They've got the ascendancy back to Miller. He's close. Can he get there? Miller, I think he's got there. The powerhouse front rower has got a grand final try. 16-12 on the community TV. Wow. What an impact. What an impact by Jordan Miller. He's back. He's back from the sin bin, and he's back with a bang. And the tackle before you saw him with some ball playing as well. He's going to be some player, Jordan Miller, off the back fence, get, getting it there and saying, give it to me. It's taken three and four tacklers to put him down all day. He's still looking to get the arm free, but that time all he was thinking about was the try line. What an effort that was. Well, you could actually count. There was five Hills players trying to stop him. Take a look at this on our front on replay here. They ended up taking the tap 10 metres out. Let's roll the tape. Here he comes. Big bad Jordan Miller. Thank you very much. Well, you could see the pendulum. It was swinging and shaking. The funny thing is you could, you could see that hit up from a mile away as well. Yeah. Miller started at about the 15 metre line and said, I'll take this one. And the Hills players, they still couldn't stop him. Goes to show just the strength and obviously the, the size, as you can see. You don't have to be here in the flesh to, to see the, the brute size and force of that man. But he's going to be some player. I mean, he already is. And he's only 17 years of age. Wow. Here's the kick. It's a beauty. Straight over the black dot here at Leichhardt Oval. The grand final. It's coming alive. Pats. They've gone bang, bang in the space of three minutes. Yeah, Col Colquhoun finally gets that radar working. Obviously had missed a, a couple of earlier ones. And right now, he will have to obviously put that behind him. They do find themselves two points down. Three tries apiece. But it's Pats with all the momentum. So still plenty of time left. And for the third time in about a five or six minute span, the Hills have had to have a chat about what went wrong defending their own try line. So a huge couple of minutes here for the Hills to try and work their way back into this game as Metcalf kicks off. Not as deep on that occasion as now Miller gets one a little bit wider breaking more tackles Miller up to his own 20 finally someone went down low and just chopped his legs from underneath him this is a good set as well so far ball in hand from Pats Myers is back out there he was happy to run that one pretty straight and not rely on that fancy footwork that he's displayed so far in this game pushing it out to this right hand edge just trying to create something over halfway now Sione Lola here so back in field Jack Lee fifth and last plays at 40 out from that Hills line Miller through hands Colquhoun tries to find grass in behind he does but it was a nice clean bounce back there for Sean Pockier. Yeah, Sean Pockier ended up finding himself into the grand final today after C.O.C. Kalidi succumbed to a leg injury, we understand, but what about the tension around the ground? This is grand final day. This is epic. They've lost the football. They've lost the football. Hills 40 out from their own line. Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. They are only down by two. But is it their time now? 30 metres out from the opposition's goal line. Rugby league's a, a funny game, honestly. For the first 40 minutes, the Hills had all the momentum, all the ascendancy, and now you, you have a look at the site here at Leichhardt Oval. Every single Patrician Brothers Fairfield student is on their feet and their team is riding the momentum. 
Four minutes and change left in this game. Pats down by two points. And they go down that left edge with Godfrey Ilavalu. Now back in field. Arch with a carry. It brings Muwaga to Tia in at dummy half. It wasn't the cleanest of play the balls, but we will continue with Myers. 10 metres out, centre field. Colquhoun wants it to the right. Shifts it out to that right edge. Daniels with the wraparound. He's lost it. Great defence out on that left wing there from the hills. And finally, they put a stop to a Patrician Brothers Fairfield attacking raid in this second half. And it was Blake Metcalf again. The fullback with that tremendous tackle which denied them any possibility of getting closer to the white stripe so the scrum will pack down here 10 meters out and going away to collect the footy is jonathan ibrahim what have we got three and a half minutes remaining on the community tv scoreboard as we see now, Metcalf, he comes short. Hill Sports High, back slams. Great defense over the top here from Ilavalu. Lovadidi now, he takes play towards the 20. So they're struggling, the Hill Sports High, to come outside their own 30 meter line. Now they try to put the foot to the accelerator. But they can't get past their own 40, can they? Here's Metcalf. Picked up a try. He loves big time pressure. Two points in it. Charge down. He's a chance now. Al has him. Can he pop them to the front? He dives towards the Premiership. Joshua Al has him. Incredible. Leichhardt Oval, the foundations, they are shaking. Patrician Brothers of Fairfield, they've gone to the front with two minutes remaining. We talk about moments in football. We talk about big moments in rugby league. Well, moments, do they come much bigger in grand final football than that? Joshua Alhazam. He has put the sky to the front and towards the Premiership. Yeah, incredible. And it's funny because it was Jordan Miller and Joshua Alhazen, the two doing chase there, putting pressure on Cassius Tia. And they've been probably Pat's best two forwards today. When they needed runs and they needed answers, it's been those two. And now they've both put themselves on the score sheet and now put themselves in front in this game with just a couple minutes left. What a ridiculous comeback it has been in this second half. Down 16 points to nil, four unanswered tries. Just insane. Just an insane last quarter of rugby league here. Ah, Patrician Brothers of Fairfield. The school hasn't won the competition for 30 years. Are they about to break the drought? Taj Colhoun, he kicked them into the grand final last week at Campbelltown. And today, he's kicked perhaps the last penalty goal of the grand final as well. One minute remaining. Ooh, what a classic grand final. Yeah, and it ain't over yet. All of a sudden, it's obviously the Hills that are going to need to show some urgency. And Blake Metcalf is going to go the short kickoff. It's questionable whether it goes the 10. It's going to travel out on the full. And that could be just about game over Red Rover. A penalty back on halfway for Patrician Brothers Fairfield. And now, of course, they're not thinking about going quickly at all. I think about trying to soak up as much time off the clock here and wait for the final siren. 
And Miller, he's going to take the tap. And he says, boys, follow me. He's been in the sin bin, but he's been up there in the top three. Best players out there on the field for Patrician Brothers of Fairfield in today's grand final. 15 seconds remaining as Jordan Miller, the second last touch possibly in the grand final. The countdown is on. Patrician Brothers. Here's Lee. And there it is. It's all over. It's been 30 years since their last premiership. 30 years later, they have come to Leichhardt Oval and they have knocked over the Hill Sports High School. What an absolute epic, epic grand final. The final score, 20 points to 16 in favour of Patrician Brothers of Fairfield.